Hello. Welcome to Candace Audiobooks. Today, we'll be reading Stephen King's The Shining. <laughs> and I, if you have an audiobook request or a creepypasta request, please leave it down to um, my dis the description to the comments below or DM me on my Instagram. Let's do this. Part 1. Before any matters. Chapter 1. Job interview. Jack Torrance thought, Officer uh, Officer's little prick, Altman stood 5'5", five, five, and, and when he moved, he was a little prissy steed that seemed to be exclusive uh, uh, doing with a small, plump man. The, the part in his hair was exact, and his dark suit was sober and a bit comforting. I am a man that you can bring problems to. That suit is a paying is a paying customer. You hired to to, to to spoke currently. This had to be better be good than you. You there'll be a red curtain with a label, perhaps that no one on the street would make would mistake Stuart Illman for the local undertaker. As he listened to Illman speak, Jack Illman speak. Jack admitted to himself uh, that he will probably uh, not have have liked any man on uh, the final side of his desk. Under the circumstances, old man uh, old man had asked the question he hadn't caught. That was his bad. Old man was the type of man who would uh, file such lapses uh, away at a mental. Rolex for later conservation. I'm sorry. I asked you if your wife fully understood what you have been taking here. And there is your son, of course. He glanced down at the application in front of him. Daniel, your wife is a bit I intimidated by the idea. Wendy is an extraordinary woman. And your son is also extraordinary? Jack smiled. It was a big PR smile. We like to think so, I suppose. He's quite a self for a five-year-old. Not returning a smile from a woman. He stepped into Jack's application and back to a file. The file went into the drawer. Or the desktop was out completely bare except for the bloater, a telephone, a transfer lamp, and an in-out basket. Both sides of the in-out were completely empty, too. Oman stood up and went to the file cabinet in the corner. Step around the desk, if you will, Mr. Torrance. Look at uh, look at your hotel floor plans. He brought back a five uh, five large sheets of uh, uh, the down to a glossy uh, plane uh, of the desk. Uh, Jack stood by his shoulder, very much uh, of the scent of Alman's cologne. All my men wear English leather. And they are nothing that all of us came to mind for no reason at all. And he had to clamp his tongue between his teeth to keep a brain of laughter beyond the wall. Oh. Barely the sounds of the overlooked hotel's kitchen gathering from the lunch top floor, Elman said briskly, the attic. Absolutely nothing up there for but a brick at brick. An overlook it has changed hands uh, so, so seven times since World War Two, and it seems that each you know, server manager has put everything they what they don't want to put up in the attic. I went around to the point in the park but I showed it in some of the third floor uh, uh, chamber rooms. They say they have heard rustling noises. I don't believe it or not. And it's not for a moment, but it must have been a uh, hundred chances of rats in Harris of an overlook hotel. Jack, who was suspected to be every hotel in the world, had a rat to held his tongue. Of course, you wouldn't allow your son up in the attic under any circumstances. No, Jack, uh, Jack said. And he flashed his big prayer smile again, humiliating situation. He didn't have a little prick, actually. 
would allow his son to goof around in the rat trap attic full of junk fortune of, and God knew what else. Over the whisk away the attic for a plan to put into the bottom of the pile. The overlook has uh -huh, 110 guest cook quarters, he said in a sorry voice. Thirty of them, all suits, were uh, and are here on the third floor. Ten of the west wing, including the the, the suit, ten of the corner. Then ten more of the east wing, one of command, is in review. Could you at least spare the sail walk? He, but he kept it quiet. He noted to who did not needed the job. No one had put the third floor at the bottom of the pile, and they had studied the second floor. Oh. Forty rooms, Omen said. Thirty doubles and ten singles, and the first floor, twenty each, plus three who lives in closets on each floor, and a storeroom, which has the extreme east of the hotel, second floor of the extreme the west on the first. On the first questions, Chuck shook his head. All but whisker the second and the first floor. So far away. Now, lobby level. Here's your center of the registration desk. Behind it, there are officers. Uh, the office uh, offices. The lobby runs for eighty feet uh, in either direction of the desk. Over here, in the west wing of the overlooked dining room, is a Colorado Lodge. Uh. Uh, the banquet ballroom has faithfully in the east wing questions only about the basement jack said for a uh, winter caretaker on the most important level uh, of all of all where the action is so to speak now what what uh, will show you all of that the basement floor plan is in the boiler room wall. He frowned impressively, perhaps to show him as manager. He did not concern himself on the event of accepting the overlooks of operation of the boiler. And plumbing um, that might not be a bad idea to put some traps down there just for a minute. He scowled to put a, and put an, a note on his pad, took him to his inner coat pocket. Each she before a legend from uh, from the desk of of Stuart Omen is his bold black script he tore it off and dropped it into uh, into the out basket. It sat here looking uh, lonesome. Uh, the the pad disappeared back to Omen's jacket pocket and the clothes version of uh, the magician's trick. Now you see here, jackety boy. Don't you know the guy is a real heavyweight? Uh, they had their resumed their original positions. Omen had a desk, and Jack had in front of it. An interviewer and interviewee suspected the reluctant Patreon Elman uh, folded his knee little hand to it, his desk uh, and looked directly at Jack, small baldy man who had a blank suit and a gray, a quiet gray tie. The flower label was balanced off by a small label pin on the other side, where somebody said staff on the small gold letters. I'll be perfectly frank with you, Mr. Torrance. Albert Sigley is a powerful man with a large infant at the Overlook, which showed a prophet of the season for the first time of history. Mr. Shockerly also sits at the board of directors, but he's not a hotel man. Uh, he is appears to be amid this, but he has made his wishes caretaking in the matter quite obvious. He wants you hired. Uh, I will do so, but he had given the free hand on this matter. I will not have been taking you on. Jack's hands were clutched tightly in his lap, barking against each other, sweating. A precious little prick, a precious little prick, a precious... And I don't believe you don't care for much for me, Mr. Torrance. I don't care. Start your feelings uh, toward me play no part in the belief that you have no not the right job uh, to do the season the, the, the job during the season 
spread from May, th uh, May 15th to the September 13th. The Overlook employees uh, have 110 people in full time, a little uh, for every room. In the hotel, you might say, I don't think many of them like me, and I expect that uh, some of them think that I'm a bit of a bastard. Why do you want to correct your judgment of my character? Why do you uh, but I have a bit of a bastard to run this hotel in the manner it deserves? He looked at Jack for a comment, then Jack flushed a PR smile again, large and crossly toothy, Omen said. The Overlook was built in the years 1907 to 1909. The closest down the Sidewinder are 40 miles of here we hear the roads and it's closed for some time in late October or November. So someone in April, a man named Robert Townley once built it. The grandfather of Thor President Richard's man Van would stay there for Rockefellers and and stars at Dew Point. And so four presidents have been staying in the presidential estate Wilson and heading Roosevelt and Nixon. I won't be ha I won't be too bad heading heading nurse and Jack murmured. Owen followed for his regards. It proved so much uh, for Mr. Wilson. He sold the he sold he sold the hotel in nineteen fifteen. It was sold again for nineteen twenty two in nineteen twenty nine and nineteen thirty six. It's just a fence to the end of World War Two. Then it was purchased and was completely ran by a horse there, a million uh, a millionaire, a venture pilot film producer and and, and engine bear. <laughs> I knew that. I know that name, Jack said. Yes. He touched the uh, he, he he touched the scene to turn to gold. Except the overlook. He funneled over a million dollars to put a uh, post war for a war uh, guess uh, ever so stopped uh, through the doors, uh, turning into a different relic, the show place. It was during how relic I saw until uh, you arrived. A rogue? A British forebear with a, a corner, Mr. Torrance. The, uh, the the corner of the, the bat and third eye is the rogue, according to legend. And Dora learned the game from its social security and fell completely in love with it. Ours may be the finest uh, real horse in America. I wouldn't doubt it, Jack said bravely, a road court and trumpery full of hedge animals and a friend of the next, a life size Uncle Wiggly, a game behind this horse of shit. It's going to be very tired of Mr. Stuart Elman. He would see that Elman wasn't done. Elman had to get his way to see every last word of it. And when it came to the three million, George sold the group of California and Ventures. They ex their experience with the Overlook was kind of equally bad. Not the hotel people. In 1970, Mr. Stockley and a group of associates have bought the hotel and turned the management over to me. We have also for the rent for, for, for several years, but I'm happy to say the trust in your present owners and me has never worked. Last year we broke in. And this year, the, over the years, the year of the Overlook accounts have been written in black ink for the first time ever in seven decades. Jack supposed that little fussy little man's pride was justified in an original dislike over October came up again in the way in the way. He said, I see no connection between overlooks and the colorful history. Uh, feeling that I'm the only one with the post, Mr. Oldman. But one reason that the overlook had lost so much money belies the description. The sessions for the occurrence of each winter shortens the profit of a great deal or more than you might believe, Mr. Torrance. The Rogers are fantastically cruel in that order to fill with the problem. I'm in the fall of a full time winter caretaker for the run of the boiler and the heat different parts of the hotel. I'm a daily rooting and basis. To repair the blockage of this occurs, uh, repairs are. And the elements don't get uh, a hold. I'm constantly alert. Uh, any, uh, ev 
Wisconsin and Congress said during the first winter hired a family of a single man. There's a tragedy, a horrible tragedy. Omen looked at Jack uh, coolly and uh, impartially. I made his mistake. I made it freely. The man was a drunk. Jack felt a slow, hot grin. A total absence of the toothy PR grin. A stretch across his mouth. What is that? I'm surprised Al didn't tell you. I've retired. Yes, Mr. Shockley told me you're no longer to drink. You also told me about your last job. Your last position of trust, you shall say. You were teaching English in a veteran prep school. You lost your temper. You don't believe that you have you know, you know, that. But you do believe that since the Grady's case has been admiring, that is where part of your uh, previous history connection is in the winter of 1970 uh, to 71. After we have the overlook before our first season, I hired this. The unfortunate named Delbert Grady. He moved to the, cow, the, the quarters that both you and your wife and your son and will be sharing. He had a wife and two dollars, which has reservations. Uh, the main ones have been the hurt is of the winter season and the fact uh, that Grady's will be cut off from the outside world is to for five to six months. But not but that's not true, is it? There are telephones there. There's probably a citizen's band on the radio as well. Well, and the Rocky Mountain National Park within a helicopter range is a piece of a chopper or two. I wouldn't know about that, Omen said. The hotel has have two-way radio that Mr. Watson will show you along with the correct facilities to broadca uh, broadcast if you need help. The telephone lines between Pierre and Sidewine are still above ground and they're going every winter to some point or, or the other to accept them for three weeks or a month or a half. There's a snowmobile at the equipment of the shed also. And then the place is really isn't cut off. Mr. Ullman looked pained. Suppose your son or your wife will be tripped down the stairs or fractured his or her skull, Mr. Torres? Think the place is cut off then? Jack saw the point. A snowmobile running the cop with the speed is a sidewinder in an hour and a half. Maybe a helicopter from the park's rescue service will get here for three hours. Under Octavian conditions in a blizzard, it would never be able to lift it off, or you couldn't hope to run a snowmobile at a top speed, even though it takes a seriously injured person into the temp to jet temperatures that might be 25 below or 45 below if you add the wind and chill factor. Now in the case of Grady, Almond said, I'll receive so much Mr. Shockley under your case for damaging itself. Uh, himself, itself. Uh, better for the men from his family with him. If there's any trouble, I thought the odds were very high and sometimes less urgent. A fractured skull or accident, one of the power tools, and some sort of convulsion. A serious case of flu, paria, a broken arm, and a, even appendicitis. Any of these things will leave enough time. I suspect it came a result of a cheap, so much cheap whiskey, so much of Grady laid into a generous supply on, on Noah's best and to me, a curious condition of the old timers I call cabin fever. Do you ever hear of a term? Offer of, of, uh, of a little smile. Ready to explain it as soon Jack admitted his ignorance, and Jack is happy to respond quickly and crisply. It's a slang term for a claustrophobic reaction can occur and some people shut together. Over long periods of time, I, the feeling of the claustrophobia has been uh, for dislikes and people can be shut in with it. Yeah, in some cases, it can result in hallucinations, violence, murder, anything, no minor things it could be burned. Metal arguing over the turn into, into dishes. Old men looked rather non-pleased. 
which Jack now go the world of good. Woody pressed it a little further, but he suddenly promised Wendy would stay cool. I suspect he made the same mistake as that. And did he hurt them? Hurt them? Him? He killed them, Mr. Torrance. Then he committed suicide. He murdered the little girls with a hatchet and his wife with a shotgun. And, it's, and himself in the same way. His leg was broken, but now he's so drunk uh, he fell downstairs. Ellen spread his hands and looked at Jack so frightedly. What is, was he a high school graduate? As a matter of fact, he wasn't. Ellen said a little sniffly. I shall say a little less as an individual, but it will be less suspicious than the of the loneliness. That was your mistake, Jack said. A stupid man would prove will be prone to cabin fever, uh, prone to shoot someone over a card game or commit a score of the moment robbery. When he gets bored, uh, he gets bored, and then the snow comes, and there's do watch TV or play solitary or cheat whenever he gets the aces out. Nothing can do but bitch at his wife and nag the kids and drink. It's so hard to sleep because there's nothing to hear. So he drinks himself to sleep and wakes up with a hangover. And he gets edgy. Maybe he gets in the telephone and off the TV and everyone blows it down. But does it do anything but think? Finally, boom, boom, boom. Where is a more educated man than such yourself? My wife and I like to read. We like to play work on Al, on Al Shockley. I told you, Danny has his puzzles, he, his coloring books, and his crystal radio. I plan to teach him to read, and I am old as a teacher to the snowshoe. Why do you like to learn how, too? Oh, yes, I think as the other hair of the TV goes on well, Mr. Fritz, he paused. And Al was telling the truth about I no longer drink. I did once, but I didn't. And be serious. I have so much of the glass beer I had 14 months. I don't want to bring any alcohol up there. I don't think uh, you've heard the go on the snow files. Is that a quite correct? Ellen said. Well, it's so long as three uh, uh, the potential for problems is multiplied. I told Mr. Shockley this and he would uh, want me to take responsibility. Now I have told you apparently with a willing to take responsibility. I am. All right, I accept that. Since I have a little choice, but I can think of rather an uh, attracted college boy. Take it a year off. Perhaps you'll do. Now I'll turn you over to Mr. Watson and through uh, the basement with, around the grounds. Unless you have uh, further questions. No, not at all. Someone stood. I hope I have no hard feelings, Mr. Torrance. There is nothing personal things I could have said to you. There is a best with our overlook uh, of the great hotel, if I wait. No, no hard feelings. Jack flashed his PR grin again. But he glad Ilman didn't offer him to shake hands. Uh, there were hard feelings, all kinds of them.